Hey everybody, it's Virtual Rook. I have finally finished a very long project that I've been meaning to do for a very long time. Now honestly, I finished this project probably about two weeks ago, uh, and I've just been kind of putting off doing the final video recap of what it is exactly that I made, but I made a VR game. And now some of you might be like, but Andrew, you've already made a VR game in Unreal Legend, and this really isn't that impressive at all. But that video really wasn't a game. It was more a concept or just proof that I could get VR working. So I'm about to go into exactly what's different about this game and what kind of things I learned. Before I get to that though, I'd really love it if you like and you comment and you subscribe. I know every single YouTuber says it constantly, but genuinely, I would love to hit 500 subscribers by the end of the year, before the end of the year, because we're in December and I was really hoping to hit 500 before the end. Uh, and it just helps me out a lot. It, it encourages me to build more videos like this. <laughs> and if you're just here because you're curious about what the end product looks like, uh, you can just go to this time in the video. I'll put it right here. I don't know when it is now because I'm recording. So yeah, the time will be right here. Just jump to that. You'll get to see what the end game looks like. But beyond that, let's get into things that I learned. So first off, quick look of an overview of what I have. Got this pretty desert, this awesome shooting gallery type situation. You, you know, start off, you get to read about me learning about making this. I made a really crappy model of a desert eagle that I think is only like probably less than 100 polys. I also was playing around Substance Painter, so I was learning a lot about, you know, just materials and how to, how to work with them. Made a TV, made a scoreboard. That was surprisingly difficult. High score does not work yet. I don't know when it will uh, or if it ever will because I, I think I just want to get to the next project to be perfectly honest. But you hit the button, you go through the door, and you know, you have these target dummies that I'm sure you guys remember from some of my streams if you've been here for a while, but these are my, uh, these are my target dummies. They're great. And from that on, it's just your usual shooting gallery. One of the cool things that I did with this is no matter how many target dummies there are in the scene, it's reflected on how many you have to knock over on this board. So even if I change up the layout and add more dummies or less dummies, this number will reflect that no matter what. And if we want, we can take a quick look into that. So I don't think that this is the best way to do it because I swear in Unity there was a much better way to take make like a timer, but for making the correct time, we're just going off an event tick and then we are delaying by one, which gives you, I believe a second. And then we're telling it every second to add an extra second. Then if it hits 60 seconds, this is true and it sets minute to one, and then it sets seconds back down to zero. So it just adds one more minute every second that passes. The tutorial that I built this off of was how to create a game timer in Unreal Engine 5 by Wevesa Game Development. Sorry if I'm butchering your name. I mean, it works. I don't think it's the most efficient way. There, there has to be a better way to do it, but it works. So that's what I went with. Still on the timer. But then what we do is we take that number and we just use a set text, target is timer. So we just set text to the timer, which is literally just us getting our seconds, telling it how many minimum integer digits it can have, maximum integer digits it can have, blah, blah, blah. And then we're just using an append to put the little, I forget what those are called. Those thingies, the dots, you know, the dots, the dots you see on a clock. <laughs> we just put minutes and then seconds. So really not a difficult setup at all. Uh, and set kills honestly is even easier. All it's doing is getting the number of targets, which is an array. So it's just finding all of the total amount of targets that we have in the scene. And it's doing a zero by, and then the number of targets. And it's doing this at the beginning. So at the very beginning, it's setting the number of targets that are in the scene and then saying that you have killed zero of them, right? Because you haven't started the game. Now down here, we have the track kill counter. I'm using an interface event. I still don't super understand how interface events work, but they seem to be the easiest way for me to quickly connect multiple things and pass information between them. So that's what I'm using. Uh, and all we're doing is if a target gets knocked over, then we're going to set the number of kills by, or plus one. 
So this number always starts at zero. It gets a plus one if this event tick says true. Uh, and then that just gets fed back into the same thing, which was the number of targets. But now that's taking up the A spot for the append. So now it's going to say how many you've knocked over and then the total number of targets. Super easy stuff. So that was really important for me to learn. Again, that was something that like working with interfaces was kind of a head scratcher for me. But I mean, I think that this is a pretty elegant way of setting it up. I like it at least. But if there is a better way to set it up, I would love to learn other ways to have blueprints talking to each other. And like, there might be a better way to just feed the data from the targets getting knocked over to this. But I, it feels right. I mean, it works. I'm not going to go into the pistol because the pistol is literally just the exact same gun that they start you out with in uh, the VR template. I've just replaced the model with my own model to make it a little bit more interesting. I already have a tutorial about the button that I'll post a link to down below. So you can make your own VR button. All that I've done with it is make it that once it passes a certain threshold of movement, it sends out another, you guessed it, interface call. That interface call, which causes this door to open and the timer to start. Past here, if I bring up my view, there's a volume that once the player passes this volume, it sends another interface call to tell this door to close and for this door to open because we're past the threshold. So I don't have to worry about you walking backwards anymore because I can close the door on you. And that's basically all that it does. Every single one of the, every single one of the target dummies is just sending a true or false statement on whether or not it's been knocked over. If it's been hit, then it's going to send an interface saying, yes, I've been knocked over, which then gets referred to on the timer, which was what I was explaining earlier. This will show up as you've knocked over this many targets. And once you've made your way through the entirety of the maze, you get to the exit. And again, this door will be open now because of it getting information from this volume. And once you pass the threshold of the door, it'll tell this door to close. It'll send an interface telling this door to close and it'll tell your timer to stop because you've, you've run the course and you're done. Good job. And that's it. That's literally all that I've made. I do want to point out one more thing. Sorry, this is just something that I see a lot, especially with like indie devs and stuff that nobody seems to understand how to do. And I think it's like one of the best things that you can do uh, when making materials actually is you see this fence? Like this is just a repeating fence texture. That's it, right? Nothing too spectacular, nothing crazy. But you'll notice that even though all of these panels are separate panels, this is perfectly repeating. Like they're all the same size. It doesn't matter how long the panel is or how short the panel is. All of the fence is the same and looks correct. <laughs> and maybe I'm getting too excited about this. Maybe this is something that everybody knows, but like if you don't want to deal with Z fighting and if you don't want to deal with like, you know, having to input a uh, UV sizing for every single object, you can just, here, let me find it real quick. So I'm going to run through this really quick. I don't know a huge amount about materials, but this I do know. And that is, first off, you have to take each component of your texture. So, you know, the, the base color, the uh, normals, the opacity mask, all of those things. You have to turn them into texture objects. That's very important. It can't be the other thing. I forget what the other thing's even called, but it, it has to be a texture object. You then feed each of those into a world align texture. And then you say XYZ texture on all of them. And then you just feed it in. Like if I literally broke this right now, and now let's say that we plug these in, which is what you would normally do whenever you were bringing in materials, right? You would just grab your texture samples, you would feed the RGB out. There we go. Okay, this is what you would normally have if you were going to bring it in an instance like this. Let's apply, right? Let's save. Now, watch what happened to all of my fences. Look at this. Look, this, this is squished horribly. These are like semi-accurate, but they're they're incorrect over the span of things because like I just took one panel and I resized it to fit all this stuff. So it's all over the place. Like this doesn't look like a correct fence at all. It looks like hot garbage. We're back to where we needed to be. And now all of them are correct. They stay consistently correct because they're world aligned. They're following the world instead of following the object itself. This is so big, especially if you're making like walls that you want to be consistent and always line up and match. I think this can also stop Z fighting, but I might be wrong about that. I think this corrects Z fighting, but I, I I'll get back to you on that. There's one last very important thing that I wanna bring up. 
Um, and you're going to see it as soon as we get to the gameplay, which is coming up here in a second. The VR player palm that you get in Unreal Engine really isn't that great out of the box. You kind of have to do a lot of work to make it so it can interact with things, so that uh, it has physics of its own, and kind of just, I wanted it to be more like, you know, Half-Life Alex, for instance. And there is an amazing tutorial series that you absolutely should go and do right now. You should go do it right now. I'm gonna post it here in a second. Here it is. Setting up smooth locomotion VR using Unreal Engine 5.1 Plus, using the Enhanced Input System by GDXR. Holy crap, this video is a gold mine. You should absolutely use this. And then once you've finished making that character, use that character in everything, because it really opens up so many windows of just like better input for the VR setup that a lot of games use. And if you're lazy and just have money to blow, $75, you get even more inputs and setups that he's built for like just a VR template character that you can uh, like this. I'm not sponsored by the way, but GDXR really knocked it out of the park. I mean, look at this, uh, grabbing objects, throwing objects, interactable doors, uh, switches, tap buttons, slide buttons, rotating cube, key card examples, sliding drawers. It goes on and on switch levers, crank wheels, like, this is a gold mine. I really want to buy this. It's just, I mean, you know, you know how things are right now. I can't financially afford anything, so uh, I haven't yet. I think that everybody should still build their first character using his tutorials just because they're, it's very enlightening. You know, it teaches you a lot about blueprints and stuff. It's great. But here's how you can do that without having to do anything. Anyway. So that's enough gushing. You're about to see how good his VR pawn works because uh, it is now time for the video where I go and we play through this. And uh, I encourage you to download this. I'm hoping to put this up. This should go live on my itch.io at the same time that this video goes live. So if you're watching this video, then congratulations, it's live. And I encourage you to beat my score. You won't. I built this. I'm a god at this. But I encourage you to try. And uh, yeah, that basically sums it up. Let's get to the game. All right, here we are in the shooting gallery. You'll see we have 14 targets set up, zero time set, pick up our gun. Again, not a great model, but it shoots. And that's kind of the most important thing. And it's at least like semi-accurate. So anyway, as you'll see if you play, hello, my name is Virtual Rook. I just really wanted to make a VR game, so this is my first go. Pick up the gun, press this button below, and run through the maze. Uh, trying to take out all targets as fast as you can. Thank you for playing. Which we're gonna do. Let's fucking go. All right, we're in. One shot, one kill. Okay, that was the first time I like super missed. All right, let's fucking go. And there you have it, dorks. Oh Jesus, I'm gonna fall over. <laughs> Where are you at? <laughs> okay. <laughs> 31 seconds, 14 targets hit out of 14. Uh, that, that's fine, okay. I know. I'm pretty amazing at the game that I made. But anyway, thank you so much for watching everybody. It really means a lot to me. Again, please subscribe. It, that That's super important. But honestly, just thanks for watching because that's huge. Again, I know I said this last time, but I'm going to try to make these videos more frequently. I'm hoping that very soon uh, we'll be getting into the next VR game where I hope you like spooky things and puzzles because that's the goal. So I'll see you there. But yeah, uh, see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>